So uh, the next part of this, now that we have all the, the staples cleared out, is to glue just like you would for any flat. So I'm just going to put this together and I'm actually not going to uh, glue this together and put Luon on this particular flat, which is normally what you skin uh, a flat with. I'm going to put another product and it's a Fibrex product. Uh, it's a medium density fiber board with a thin veneer of a birch plywood on both sides of uh, both faces of the sheet. One of the problems with Luan is it's from Indonesia or the Philippines, or another country or another country that is uh, deforesting at a, a really horrendous rate. And one of the things I want to do is see what other alternatives there are. I've seen cardboard used, it waffles when you paint it. I've seen uh, thicker plywood used. It's more expensive, it's heavier. This is a, a quarter inch shop grade wood, so it's actually something that's used in building furniture and millwork. But this one is shop grade. There's something wrong with the sheet, so both sides aren't perfect. So you can get it at a few dollars more than you would pay for a sheet of Luan. It's a little heavier, but I'm hoping with the veneer, thin veneer of uh, birch on both sides, that you won't get the puckering you would if you just stapled and glued down a sheet of uh, meso masonite or uh, Fibrex quarter inch MDF or something like that. So we're going to see what it is. I'm going to show you how to reskin this and then uh, in another video I'm going to build a uh, flat from start to finish traditionally using the pine and the luan that people normally use. So Wace, if you can get the other side of this and you're going to walk towards Sarah past the sheet and there's two sides here and one of them is the bad side. The bottom, this is the bad side. You can see the, the piece that made it a shop grade. And if you can keep holding this up in the air, but a foot above, what I'm going to do is ask you to continue to hold it, and then I'm going to lower my end, but you keep your end a little higher, please. We don't want it to touch the little higher. Great. And then I'm going to put my corner down, and then come to me around a little. So there, there you go. Let's drop it down. And then you can lay your edge right down, please on top of the flat. Now the same thing goes with skinning flats as it goes with skinning risers. That's great. You're never ever going to get one of these so that the, you lay the sheet on and it's perfect right at the, uh, right the get-go. What you're going to want to do, did you turn the air on? Could you please turn it on? Thanks, Oase. Um, what you're going to want to do is bit by bit square up the sheet as you go around. So, there you go, perfect. What you're going to want to do is start in a corner. Get this corner perfect and it's a good depth. And then work the short end first. You hang it over a bench and you work about a foot at a time getting the bottom of the frame in line with the bottom of the sheet good. Putting my staples six to eight inches apart. I'm actually going a little deep so I'm going to set that a little different. And I'm just going to follow it because I'm finding my staples are going a little deep. That's better. Started out fine. But Again, I want to hang this end off the bench. There we go. And I'm going to work my way now up the long edge. Now there's a bit of a conversation that happens when it comes to which way you run your staples, with the grain or across the grain. Strength-wise, after reskinning thousands of these and building thousands of these, I can't say that I see a real difference in the strength. They don't go as deep 
when you run them across the grain because you're capturing the grain. This is made out of Fibrex though, so it's really not making a big difference. The big difference is running with and across the grain is actually puckering up the top. You actually get a little bit of the wood sticking up when you go across the grain. When you go with the grain, they go in nice and easily. It's still kind of six one way, half dozen the other at the end of the day, but it makes for interesting conversation. My painter friends usually enjoy it when I go with the grain, so that's a good enough reason to go with the grain. On the top and the bottom, I usually go across the grain, but on all the internals, I go with the grain. It's just the way I've developed to doing it. I don't know that it's going to make that big a deal. <coughs> Now I'm going to come around and do the other side. And this side is where it is now. Not a lot of pushing in and pulling out I can do on the sheet. And we're there. Can you bring that hose over for me, Oase? This is an overhang, this is an oversized sheet of plywood. All right, that's great. So the next part of this is I've just marked where the center of each rail is underneath there. Um, some people use a T-square. I don't find the T-square is as accurate as I'd like to be, so I mark both sides of it of the flat center of the toggle and I actually just draw a pencil line for me to follow. Alright. And uh, now I'm just going to I'm not going to reach all the way across, but I'm going to continue to do staples. Coming around. And then I'm going to finish this off. So the next step here, now that I've got it stapled and glued on in place, is just to clean up the edges. And I'm going to use a flush trim router to do that. I am going to wear my mask, though, because uh, of the lots of dust. <laughs> 